The top-down genre has been around for a long time. Since the earliest days of Pac-Man and Gauntlet, top-down games have bridged a plethora of genres, from top-down shooters like Hotline Miami to top-down adventure games like the original Legend of Zelda titles. But if you do a quick Google search for top-down horror games, you'll only see a small number of titles. Chief among them, 2015's Still in Early Access Knocked, 2013's Roguelike Teleglitch, and 2017's Darkwood. But why aren't there more? Well, one of the defining characteristics of the top-down genre is the amount of omniscience granted to the player. In games like Hotline Miami or Pac-Man, the player is able to more or less survey the whole of the playing area at once and plan their strategies accordingly. But horror games typically rely on placing the player in the first or third person perspective to build a more immediate sense of mystery, dread, and tension within the game world. Rarely do you find a game where the two elements of top-down gameplay and horror mix well. Knock does the job well enough for an early access title, but Darkwood takes things a step further with how it immerses the player in its top-down horror setting. The primary way Darkwood immerses the player is by only revealing the world via line of sight. Everything beyond your immediate cone of vision is shrouded in a dense fog, similar to what RTS titles like to call the fog of war. But unlike the area-based reveal when traveling through an RTS fog, the fog in Darkwood is truly line-of-sight based. Your cone of vision will be obstructed by things like broken down cars, fences, and fallen trees. Hidden just beyond a pile of rocks could be a body for you to loot or a rabid dog awaiting its next meal. A couple of times I would wander through a fairly open area only to discover something new on the way back through, something I had missed before because it had been hidden behind some obstacle or another. The relative omniscience commonly attributed to top-down gameplay is thrown out the window once you awake in Darkwood's sinister forest. Now the fog becomes to Darkwood what a dimly lit hallway is to any standard first-person horror game. The first glimpse of a monster in the fog is unsettling, and not knowing when the second glimpse will come is terrifying. In some ways, the top-down setting heightens the tension, since you can see, all at once, the different places where some creature of the woods will emerge to end your life. Beyond the obscurity of the fog is another element keeping your character figuratively and literally in the dark, the game's eponymous Dark Woods. The relative darkness of Darkwood's open spaces is nothing compared to the dense legion of trees that enclose the game's playable areas. And as with any good horror piece, be it a film, game, or book, your imagination should be capable of creating more meaningful scares than anything actually presented to you. And the forests of Darkwood do just that. The sound design and music might as well be a part of the forest itself. The line between Darkwood's diegetic and non-diegetic sounds is so blurred one might think the music was coming directly out of the fog, or that an alarmed murder of crows came directly from the hardened bark of a downed tree. The madness of Darkwood is all-encompassing. Now, from a design perspective, the top-down space in which Darkwood operates is not a developmental misstep, but rather a fresh and exciting way of mixing up a genre that is nearing market saturation and running the risk of blurring itself into one giant jump-scare montage. Darkwood's stale, dank forests have breathed new life into a genre on the brink of irrelevance. Hey, you caught me pretending to take a poop. If you liked our video, you should like, comment, and subscribe on it. That way, YouTube knows we're awesome. Do it. I gotta wipe.